Well, good morning, everybody. Hi, I am James. Welcome, everybody, at uh, our uh, webinar number 12, the Ingenious Applied Wireless Solutions. Uh, I thank you all for, uh, for your participation, and I would just like to start uh, my uh, webinar with a short introduction of myself. I'm James Hoes. I'm working for Ingenious now for almost four years, and I um, I work as a PM and I'm responsible for uh, passing through all the information from headquarters about our products. I'm responsible to pass it through to our customers. So hereby, our webinar today about uh, Ingenious Applied Wireless Solutions. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, this presentation is like an, uh, uh, an update to our product line and unlike a standard uh, product introduction, in this presentation I would like to give you a, a horizontal projection how to uh, use uh, Ingenious products in various deployments. And uh, Ingenious, uh, the products we can, we can divide in three major categories. So we have uh, solutions, we have standalone, and we have Soho. And uh, if we talk about our uh, solution based, we have our Neutron series. Uh, with standalone, we have uh, indoor and outdoor products. And Soho, uh, we have a few routers and uh, cameras. Uh, currently, we are not focusing on Soho products. So in this presentation, I will not talk about uh, our Soho products. In this presentation, I will especially uh, uh, talk about uh, our solutions and our standalone products. So first, uh, I want to go to uh, our uh, ingenious Neutron series powered by EasyMaster. Uh, our Neutron series is actually our uh, focus product, product line at this moment. And actually, uh, last week we have launched officially our uh, Easy Master, which is a, an evolution on top of our Neutron series. It's a software that uh, uh, will uh, improve the functionality of our Neutron series uh, switches and access points. So I will start with this. I will first explain how, what is our Neutron uh, specifications, uh, the, 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 the key features of this product line. Actually, uh, all this uh, presentation, the whole presentation is like repeating our um, previous presentations, but I just would like to emphasize uh, on how can we use the products as we have in our product line. But I still need to explain a little bit for all the people who did not attend to the previous uh, presentations. So um, the Neutron uh, series, uh, the Neutron series, as we call, uh, is as we call a distributed management solution. That means that um, you do the management from a central place, and you distribute. You are not doing the the the, the, the management from the, uh, of the access point in the access point itself, but you distribute it in a central place, and from the central base you manage it from a, uh, from yeah from remotely actually. Well, it's an AP managed, it's license free wireless infrastructure. And the main uh, specification in this uh, infrastructure is that we provide uh, a, a management switch that manages the network on uh, access point level. The access points are managed by a management switch. And in just a few sentences, as I uh, displayed in this sheet, uh, we can summarize the function of the solution as followed. So we have an all-in-one switch, which is actually a layer two switch with PoE and with the management function built in. Um, the other components in our Neutron is uh, indoor and outdoor uh, access points. We have our ceiling mounts, uh, we have uh, wall plate uh, access points, and of course we have outdoor access points with uh, omnidirectional antennas. Um, our range of product line of uh, managed access points go up to 11AC 
And there is just one thing uh, that's very important with our neutron management uh, solution is that the connections uh, should be wired from the switch to the access point. But it's very logical to use like this because actually the switches uh, are PoE switches and our access point are uh, PoE access point and you can just directly both power it up and uh, make the data connection from the switch to the access point. So you can scale up your deployment in combination with up to uh, 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 20 or 50 managed access points and uh, EGS PoE switches when you and when you use our EGS uh, PoE switches, which is uh, also one uh, product line in our product range, uh, these switches will be recognized by the neutron management switches and you can monitor port status as well. So as mentioned, an EWS switch can manage up to 20 or 50 access points depending on the model, but still uh, the deployment is upscalable to manage uh, uh, multiple deployments of 20 or 50 cells, uh, 20 or 50 uh, access points, and you can um, manage them through our Easy Master software, which is reasonable, uh, recently available. So the Neutron series uh, consists out of an all-in-one controller switch, uh, which controls the managed access point. And the second component in the EWS Neutron series is the, the access points. So we have, as, as I talked before, we have both indoor and outdoor models. And um, in, in our solution, the, uh, the, the access points should be connected to the, to the management switch. Um, I just like to mention here that um, our EWS system, our Neutron system, our Neutron solution, they have to work together. So an EWS switch has to manage an EWS access point. We have other access points like our ECB series and EAP series, but these are not manageable. So therefore, you cannot manage the, uh, the standalone access points with our EWS switch. Uh, on top of our um, uh, neutron switches and access points, we also have uh, the software controller, the Easy Master. And with the Easy Master, I will explain you later, uh, there are additional functions to improve the functionality of the neutron solution. Uh, quickly over this slide, this is a list of uh, full features of the EWS solution. Um, uh, the only thing that I want to point out in this slide is that I have a few functions which are in gold color. And um, I already said that our EWS solution, uh, we have no additional licenses. Let's go back a little bit. We have no additional licenses, uh, but also for firmware updates, uh, you don't have to pay extra. Everything is provided for free. So this is also one very important feature of our Neutron solution. Um, in this slide, I want to um, point out uh, in, in, in a short way uh, where exactly is the function of uh, the management of our EWS solution. And if we go to the slide, we see that um, I have in this drawing one EWS switch uh, scale, scaled up with one, two EGSP switches, like I mentioned before. And this switch is actually doing the management and the management is, do, is, be, is done inside the EWS switch. And it will manage the access points that are connected to the EWS switch or through the EGS PoE switches. And the whole management actually happens in this area. This is as far as we get. So, the main functions of the EWS system is like auto discovery, provisioning, wireless configuration, monitoring, and controlling the access point. But additional network servers are not integrated in the management switch. So, because we believe that certain functions should be done by dedicated devices, uh, functions and services like uh, uh, fast roaming, authentication, billing, captive portal, logging, uh, UTM functions, uh, firewall etc etc should be done by dedicated devices but still 
the wireless component as we provide it is seamlessly integratable in the whole network structure with working alongside with all these services on the site. Uh, yeah, an example of these dedicated devices, like uh, you can use a, a firewall from Sonic Wall or a Ucopia access server, or if you want to use an enterprise uh, network uh, management uh, using Radius server, you can still work with our Neutron uh, solution uh, alongside with those. The basic setup. Well, I recommend to use um, EDLB solutions starting from four access points uh, in one deployment. Yeah, if, if you have smaller deployments, uh, there's no sense of using a management system because you can just easily manage one or two access points manually. Um, so this slide shows the components to start with. One switch, a management switch with four managed APs uh, wired to the switch. If you use uh, the entry level switches, you can manage up to 20 access points. And in this, access, uh, in this exact uh, setup uh, with four access points, you're able uh, to cater up to 80 simultaneous users. So uh, I have a few tables in this uh, presentation and please keep in mind that all the numbers and values mentioned in the presentation are realistic workable numbers to have stable connection. Most of the times, the numbers can be much higher. Uh, since all wireless setups are vulnerable for many uh, minimum, uh, many uh, environmental factors, we cannot guarantee minimum values for a, a distance, throughput, and concurrent users. Well, looking at this, this, this deployment, so I have one switch, uh, four access points, but you can extend this uh, access point in a scalable way uh, with four more access points, or if you want to uh, expand to another EGS switch, it's possible. So if you really want to grow up the, your deployment, uh, you can make a, a, a deployment like this, where you use sub switches uh, in fiber connected to uh, different buildings and then you can still manage up to 50 access points with one EWS switch. So at, in total, you can facilitate uh, wireless for up to 1,000 clients. But what if you want to do more? So for a real multi-site management and Genius, uh, we, 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 last week we uh, released the final version of our Easy Master, the first version, first final version of our Easy Master. And this is a solution, a software, uh, a Linux based software that needs to run on a local server and in the future also in the cloud. And the main functions are displayed in this slide multi site management, uh, cross subnet, uh, management uh, over, the, over the internet, over the cloud. And you can integrate multi uh, neutron setups. Uh, we have management uh, redundancy, and you can not uh, control. You are not restricted to this 50 access point that can be controlled with with uh, with the switch, but you can manage up to 1,000 access points with one Easy Master installation. So no matter uh, where the Easy Master is located, you can manage access points all over the world as long as the AP is connected to the internet. So how does it, uh, to point out the differences in how and where am, am I going to manage my access points? I have a few following slides here. Um, if, you are, if you have a standalone uh, deployment, then um, you have to access all access points one by one to uh, configure all the access points. If you want to uh, uh, modify or adjust some settings inside one access point, you have to go manually access that access point to change the configuration there. And if you want to do it in the second one, you have to do it again. Okay. With the neutron switch, 
you can locally manage your network from a central place. So you log in to the uh, neutron switch, and from there you can configure and manage all the APs that are managed through the EWS switch. And so far, you are on a local place, in one place, in one office, in one building, and everything is connected together. Okay. If you use our Easy Master, uh, Easy Master needs to run on a system, but uh, on a PC, and but you log into that PC, and it can be even already from remote that you log into that PC, and from that place you can manage all the local access points. You can use a switch, you can use or no switch directly. You can manage the the access point directly uh, with the Easy Master, but you can also manage uh, the access point through the EWS switch. I will come back to that later. But anyways, with uh, Easy Master, you can um, uh, log into uh, the system and you can manage the local access points. Also, you can manage access points that are not local. If you go on the internet, on a sub, uh, subnet, on another place, another location, you can manage the access point through a switch that is uh, connected to the access point in a remote place. But even directly, you can access, uh, manage access points from a, a remote place. So this is the cross network management function of our uh, uh, Easy Master. And of course, there are some redundancy functions which are displayed in the next slide. I just want to uh, quickly just flash this uh, slide. We have a lot of functions in, um, in our Easy Master. Uh, I had the three previous presentations that I had uh, in this uh, series of webinar uh, are, were dedicated on the Easy Master, you, so you can find um, the you can find that the archive presentations is downloadable, or you can just on, watch the, the presentations online where I go through all the function of of this uh, this this slide. Um, for this uh, presentation. Ingenious Applied Wire Solutions. Uh, I just want to point out uh, actually more on the next slide. And uh, I just want to explain here that uh, the Easy Master is not to, uh, uh, to replace the neutron switches. Easy Master is to make the, the solution more complete. Um, so some features um, are, um, are to be executed through a switch, some features are really like switch, switch functions. So uh, you can use the switch only uh, as the previous hardware neutron solution that's displayed in uh, the left uh, part. And if you uh, are using Easy Master only, you uh, have some features that come from the Easy Master, but initially uh, the system is designed to use both switch and Easy Master. Um, depending on uh, uh, what you want to do and what you want to manage and what level you want to manage your, uh, your deployment, uh, you can choose to either use the neutron switch only, Easy Master only, or both, depending on uh, the features that show in this slide, which are the differences. So you're talking about uh, uh, the fact that uh, with Easy Master you can uh, manage up to 1,000 access points, um, with with the switch only 50 access points, and uh, with Easy Master you use the AP grouping, and you can do the cross net cross subnet management from uh, with the Easy Master, and with if you use if you use switches, there are the switch functions like intelligent troubleshooting and the PoE switch on off, and the management of the PoE are inside uh, the switch. So, if you uh, want to summarize, uh, how can I deploy um, an Easy Master or a, a EWS Neutron switch? I cannot make you a straight lineup, but it depends on various factors. 
how you want to set up the infrastructure. So in general, there are many possibilities depending on from where and by who you want to do the network management. But mainly we can say that if you want to have a hardware-based local solution, you can work with the neutron switch only, and but then you are locally uh, 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 yeah, locked in a lo lo local place and you can manage up to 50 access points. But with the Easy Master on top, you have more possibilities, you have more AP management cap uh, capability, and of course you have cross-subnet uh, cross management. And what you also can do is you can manage uh, multiple projects with one Easy Master install. Um, the one difference, uh, the one important thing is that if you have a managed system based on one switch, you are based on, uh, you are locked on this install, on this uh, deployment. And if you use uh, Easy Master, you can have one Easy Master installation and you can manage multiple projects. Maybe if I go to the next slide, you can understand better what I mean here. So like I have one Easy Master on hand in my office and I provide the wireless service for customer A on location A, uh, the wireless uh, deployment on uh, uh, for customer B on, on, on location B, and also for customer C, I manage it with one Easy Master, with one restriction here that I can manage up to 1,000 access points with one installation of Easy Master. So here actually we end the, the uh, the explanation of where can I use Neutron uh, Switch or Easy Master uh, with this target deployment uh, to, to, to provide a managed wireless network as a server service. So an installer can provide the management as a service to the customer with hosting Easy Master for remote customers or even uh, renting out an Easy Master system on the customer premises site where the uh, Easy Master will be on the location of the customer. So, so far for explanation with uh, our Neutron series powered by Easy Master, I just want to like to, would like to point out one uh, slide here uh, because we have a lineup, like I said, we have a ceiling mount access points, we have outdoor access points, but this is a little bit special uh, uh, product. This is what we call our wall plate, wireless management access point. And this is mainly for um, designed for, for hotel room deployments where you want to have a managed access point capable to uh, be the connection point for all associated devices. And uh, the wall plate access points are to be mounted on the wall where a uh, network connection comes out of the of the wall and it will fit the standard wall mount there was, there's a bracket where you can just screw it on the existing mounting holes um, on the wall mount side there, there are rj45 and 110 block punch connections to fit uh, the, uh, the installation that's the, this is the back side and on the terminal side on this side there are LAN connections even one with PoE out and a pass-through for uh, a, a connection to non-network related, non-IP related devices like the standard PSDN telephones. So the wall plate uh, access points will come in single band and dual band models. Okay, so far for the Easy Master, uh, Neutron Series Easy Master, uh, let's go to the, to the outdoor series. Um, if we remember back the, let me go back to the index slide here. Uh, where's my mouse? Um, uh, uh, so we had, we, we spoke about the neutron series. Uh, we go to the standalone now. Uh, we go first to the outdoor series and we go later to the indoor series okay let me go most quickly okay. 
next slide. Mm. The problem is, is that I cannot see my mouse anymore. So my mouse pointer has gone. Okay, outdoor series. Ingenious has many years of experience in outdoor solutions and was a pioneer and an expert in long range wireless devices. So currently we apply our experience and our models. And for Europe, we decided a few years ago to fully comply with the local legislation and our devices follow European law by special European firmware, just to let you know. Uh, for outdoor, I would like to go through the following slides and show you a few main deployments, pointing out what engineers can do for you, which models you need and what result you can expect. So I would like to start with the mode endpoint access point. And this is actually the most basic mode that you can have for a wireless deployment. So in this case, the access point is the final point in the deployment. From here, you give wireless access to smartphones, uh, tablets, uh, laptops, etc. And I talk about uh, outdoor solutions. Uh, this mode can, use, can be used to cater uh, wireless access on campus squares, a uh, hotel, a uh, swimming pool, restaurant, terrace. And, and what you find here is that most deployments require omnidirectional antenna characteristics. Um, here are a few uh, parameters of requirements of an outdoor venue. Most important is the definition of uh, which frequency band uh, to use. And you can use only single band, 2.4 gigahertz, or you can use dual band, including uh, 5 gigahertz. Secondly, you have to choose if you want to provide 11 AC to the clients. Nowadays, use of dual band and even 11 AC is growing rapidly since the integration in personal devices, uh, smartphones, tablets. So it's, it's, it's now really booming at this moment. And, and currently, there's a big growth in the demand of dual band uh, and uh, 11 AC access point. And we see more and more uh, requirements that people want to invest in, the, in the, the latest technology to be ready for the coming few years, five, 10 years, to, to, to be able to, uh, yeah, to, to pr fulfill this requirement. Uh, the third important parameter in this topic is uh, the coverage and the density of the network. So based on the uh, coverage and density, you can select the model and the quantity of access points. Um, as an omnidirectional endpoint access point, Ingenius can offer up to one kilometer radius coverage. We offer high user capacity up to 60 to 70 users per radio, on multiple SSID, and we have many advanced features. Of course, it depends on which model that you uh, select in our product range. And we have a few different models, um, starting from a small uh, uh, light access point up to our enterprise access points. Um, for instance, here in this slide, you see the different models with omnidirectional antennas lined up uh, compared to each other. And um, so in general, if you talk about our uh, omnidirectional access points, uh, we see what that we can see that there we have our SMB lines, we have our ENS enterprise, and we have our ENH access uh, enterprise. Um, I will later go through um, the lineup in, in a table where we can find the difference, the exact differences. But you can see that there are smaller access points on the left side and bigger access points on the right side with higher capacity, further coverage. So starting from the entry level access point, our ENS series, which is very uh, attractively priced, uh, cost effective access point, you can do an omni deployment, an omnidirectional deployment up to 200 meter. If you use our bigger access points uh, from our ENS Enterprise Series, that would be the uh, ENS um, 1200, uh, ENS 1750, uh, you can do 
uh, up to 500 meters omnidirectional radius. And if you use our enterprise uh, devices uh, like the ENH 710, the ENH 900 DXT, and the 1750, you can uh, reach up to one kilometer. Of course, this distances is like in an ideal situation where there's no blocking of trees or high buildings. You cannot beam through a high building. You have to go through the air. Um, a variation on the omnidirectional, omnidirectional deployment of the access points is uh, uh, the directional variation. And uh, because sometimes, uh, sometimes in, in, in deployment, this can be uh, more suitable. Um, for instance, um, the ENS202, which is actually a directional uh, access point, it, it has an angle of uh, 90 degrees. So it can cover a 90 degree sector. So in this case, um, I would say you can cover a square from a corner. And for certain deployments like a terrace or something, this could be a very suitable solution. And, and you can even, you know, <clears throat> restrict the wireless coverage to only your terrace and not from to the neighbor's terrace, just to let customers come to your terrace and have a beer there. And, and um, another um, advantage of using directional antennas is that directional antennas, the beam of the, the coverage is concentrated uh, to a certain point. That means that the distance can be already further than the omnidirectional models. So a variation on the variation, or actually an extension on the variation, is using uh, combining multiple access points in multiple sectors. So using this um, advantage of I have one sector going further, I can add another access point to have another sec sector next to it also going further and also divide the loading of the people are, who are in this area. And in that area, I can divide the loading over different access points to cater more capacity for more people for more clients. And I, in this drawing, I have two ENS, uh, doesn't matter which model, 202 or 500, as shown in this picture. Um, our outdoor models currently are omnidirectional, and I would like to uh, pre-announce here that we are currently also working on sector antennas that can be used with our uh, ENH Enterprise Series access points. So later, you can also find that we will have ingenious sector antennas to combine with ENH 900, ENH 1750, ENH 710 to do this kind of deployment even in a larger scale with uh, high end, more high end uh, uh, access points for uh, more uh, throughput capacity and also uh, a larger distance because of the power output of the access points. Okay. Another um, classic um, mode how to use wireless access points. Let me first disable this scan. Uh, most cl second classic deployment is the point to point mode. And mostly access points with directional antenna uh, are used for pure point to point deployments. There's one access point in access point mode and the other one in client bridge mode. And you can choose uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio or 5 gigahertz, whatever suits uh, better in your deployment. Um, it's like uh, connecting, uh, replacing a cable to cable connection. Uh, with cable to cable, you cannot always do that because of the existing infrastructure or infrastructure that you don't have. And with uh, cable, you have the restriction of the, the length of the cable. And with the wireless, actually, you can go quite further uh, without the, this restriction. So Ingenious product line uh, includes different models for point-to-point -point or point-to-multipoint deployments. 
uh, on both ends of the deployment, you have cable connections. So for instance, to bridge two buildings, networks together. And if you want to connect further, for, further, you have to connect another access point. So uh, in this classic point-to-point uh, -point, uh, deployment, the devices are set in access point and client bridge mode. But if you want to set up a transparent bridge, you can use uh, WS uh, bridge modes. And WS, I will, uh, there is an, uh, another presentation after this presentation that will dedicate to the different modes of WDS. So if we go to the next slide, if I can go to the next slide. OK, so based on the antenna angle, you can reach a, a wider or a further distance. And with ingenious access point, you can easily access, uh, you can easily uh, bridge uh, uh, distances up to 10 kilometer, depending on your uh, environment. So um, looking at our product lines, uh, from top to bottom, I have the few series uh, of point-to-point -point devices listed down. Uh, I have the end station series, I have the ENH uh, SMB series, and I have the uh, ENS series uh, from top to bottom. And depending on the, on the angle, like I said, the distance can be different. So with the end station, which has a smaller angle in their um, product range, uh, in their, in their uh, coverage uh, 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 specification, you can reach up uh, distances up to two kilometer. ENH is a little wider, but it, so it can be, it, it's, it's a shorter distance. And the ENS, uh, previously shown in another deployment as a sector antenna with the 90 degrees antenna, uh, you can have uh, distances bridge up to 500 meter. And this is based on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band. Uh, we have models of this whole series in 2.4 gigahertz, but we also have models in uh, 5 gigahertz. And um, with 5 gigahertz in many EU countries, it's allowed to use a higher um, uh, power output, transmission power. So based on this, you can also have already a, a further distance. And also uh, the angles in the 5 gigahertz are a little bit different than the 2.4 gigahertz radios. So the distances in general for 5 gigahertz uh, access points are more than uh, the 2.4 gigahertz uh, variation model. Uh, just a line up here. And um, uh, the, the difference between 2.5 and uh, 4 giga, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is uh, 5 gigahertz is a little bit more vulnerable for obstacles and trees. So if you are uh, if you want to use 5 gigahertz, it's very important that you uh, have a clear line of sight, uh, especially for the five gigahertz. The 2.4 gigahertz is not so vulnerable for this kind of uh, obstructions in the, in the in the environment. Okay, point to model to point. Um, within the range of the angle of access point, you can not only connect one, but multiple client bridges. So in this case, you can set up a point to multi point uh, uh, deployments using directional antennas, uh, directional uh, access point, as long as you are in the angle of the first access point. A variation of this uh, uh, in point to multi point, you can use also an omnidirectional access point in the middle and then make a connection to. Uh, a, 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 client bridges that are around the access points. Um, the following few slides is, is, is um, a case study. And um, uh, I had a uh, system integrator who needed to install uh, IP cameras on a parking lot. And there were three access points that needed to be bridged to one central point. 
And due to the distance and availability for line of sight, uh, we decided to use ENH 500 because yeah, we can use five gigahertz because we have no no obstacles, no buildage in the, in the, in the middle. And um, yeah, we choose this because then we also have less interference of other access points and other clients. And um, yeah, actually, I already explained this. And like I said, we had to bridge a few access points uh, on a distance. And we actually, the first initial thought was to make three separate bridges, like one access point to a client bridge, second access point to a client bridge, third access point to a client bridge. So total six access points. But we found at the end that the angle on which we had to reach the three remote client bridges was only like 50 degrees. So with the specification of our ENH 500 with a 60 degrees angle, we can already cover, uh, we can already reach uh, the three remote client bridges. So in a drawing, it looks like this, and we were able to reach the access points. Then we had only one question is that uh, there were two cameras connected to uh, one access point, uh, one client bridge. And so there were six cameras in the, in the end. And the only question is, will we have enough throughput going through this first access point to, 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 um, to get the image well received into the central place? So finally, um, uh, in this uh, spectrum of, of, of uh, uh, five, 500 meter distance, 55 degrees, uh, we were able to uh, let the six cameras run, run on 1080p at 30 frames per second. And they were all connected to one ENH 500 in the central place. And the result is we, we, we reach it uh, 50 to 60 Mbps real throughput on this access point. So we were very happy, customer was very happy in this uh, case study. WISP, uh, in some European countries, there are uh, WISP providers. Yeah, some countries don't even know what this is, but I just like to point out this deployment as a solution uh, what we can, uh, where we can give a solution with our access points. Um, WISP, wireless uh, ISP, where the uh, ISP wirelessly give a, uh, a connection as your a connection for internet. And both ENS series and end stations are equipped with this client bridge mode and a client router mode for easy uh, deployment for this kind of uh, yeah, setups. So in the drawing, it looks like this, uh, where we have the WISP somewhere in a place and other people are connected to this uh, uh, access point of the WISP. Repeater mode. Um, because of the market demand, uh, the ENS series is also equipped with uh, repeater mode. And uh, the ENS is a very cheap, cost-effective uh, access point. And we actually used to have another model uh, only dedic dedicated with the repeater mode only. But uh, somehow uh, we decided to phase that out. And um, still there were small deployments uh, which ask, require for this mode. So we put this repeater mode, we put it back, we put it in our ENS series. So uh, with the repeater mode in our ENS series, you can easily um, make a, a very small uh, deployment of access point with two or three access points to co make uh, to, to, to be able to cover a certain distance with multiple access points. There is just one thing, and that's also the reason why we decided to phase out the repeater mode, is that if you use repeater mode, you use the same radio to, uh, to, to, to receive the signal, and you also use the same radio to send out the same signal. So that means that 
you use one radio to uh, to go through the whole line and, and every step you will lose uh, your throughput by half so you cannot endlessly repeat your signal after two two or three access points you already see a dramatic loss in your throughput so this is a very limited solution but especially for the ENS uh, designed for the smaller deployments this can be also a possibility for your deployment to roll out like this um, base station AP this is actually uh, the main function of uh, our dual radio uh, uh, access points like the ENH uh, 700, uh, 710, 900, 1710 and uh, they are typically designed for more outdoor deployments and they are based on a dual radio infrastructure using uh, 5 gigahertz backhauling and, and 2.4 gigahertz endpoint access point. So the secondary typical solution uh, with dual radio endpoint access point is uh, deployments where you want to uh, uh, divide clients over uh, 5 and 2.4 gigahertz. So in this case, you use uh, both uh, radios as endpoint access point. The ENH7050 is actually the first access point uh, who had uh, first outdoor 11 AC access point what was available in the market just small note here so in a, this picture it's uh, 1750 uh, EXT uh, set in WS mode on 5 gigahertz for the backhauling and um, the clients are connected to the 2.4 gigahertz endpoint AP this is like the most general and most uh, 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 obvious uh, deployment to use our um, ENH enterprise uh, access points. Of course, different uh, combination of putting the radio in different modes uh, besides the other one uh, is all possible. So there are many possibilities uh, still possible. Okay, let's go inside. Uh, for insights, uh, I'd just like to point out that we have three different series. We have the EAP, we have ECB, uh, EAP is the, the ceiling mount access point, ECB is the, the, the multifunction access point with the external antennas, and the EGS is our series of um, uh, uh, PoE switches. And these PoE switches, um, actually, I'm already talking about my next slide. Our PoE switches are 100% integratable with uh, our EWS series. Uh, like I explained, if you extend our uh, Neutron solution with our EGS series PoE switches, then the PoE switches will be recognized by the system and you can also be redirected to the switches to do some more configuration on the PoE switch, PoE switch itself. But anyways, let's go to the access point. And in general, uh, from history, we have the best wireless component in any deployment. And we use a Wi-Fi standard and we, our access points are integratable in various setups. We have proven reliability and once customers use our uh, ingenious access point, they want to keep using our products. For the indoor series, um, uh, they're typically used in office or hospitality environment. Uh, starting from a single AP solution to multiple AC, uh, AP uh, solution uh, or, or with, with, with WS or integrated with a third-party AP controlled uh, solution where you have a hardware, access point controller and billing and radio server, etc. Cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, just talking about the series um, in office and, and hospitality deployments, Mostly the EAP series access points are uh, more popular as the ceiling mounts, the one uh, on top. Let me see if I can, I cannot point it out in this slide. I see now maybe in this slide. So the EAP series, uh, because of the design and the, the, the way how you mount them in the, in the, in the, in the room, uh, in this kind of environment, it's very uh, common to use this uh, special ceiling uh, 
and there we have uh, the, the EAP is included with special clips to clip the EAP to the ceiling. And in 2012, we launched this design. And uh, at that moment, 2012, it was uh, awarded with the Red Dot Design Award. So for um, industrial and other special cases, the ECB series, that's the, the one with the external antennas, is, is, is more popular because of the fact that it has uh, multiple modes, like even client bridge mode and, and uh, repeater mode uh, in some models. Um, and it has detachable antennas, so it can also be replaced by different antennas in, in, in any deployment that you can yeah, think of. And like I said, we have our EGS series, which are the gigabit PoE switches, uh, with, 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 uh, yeah, which are complementary to the neutron solution and the indoor access point line. Uh, I just like to mention here that uh, all our access points are, the indoor access points are PoE uh, powered. And uh, so it can be powered with our EGS PoE switches. Okay, so this is the most typical depl deployments. Um, also a very interesting deployment, just uh, uh, pointing out uh, the ECB 300 and the ECB 350. Um, this model we actually sell in the Benelux. Um, uh, as the best-selling model. And uh, even though the ECB is, is, is targeted for office and industrial use. The ECB 300 and the 350 is actually best-selling deployment in the, in the EU, uh, EU is, is for large homes. Um, and it's used to extend the coverage of the router that is provided by the ISP. So this device is actually uh, very popular. Uh, this uh, office device is very popular in home use just as a variation on how versatile our uh, access points are. Okay, the last uh, thing that I want to point out is actually a pre-explanation uh, and a start, start up to our, my next uh, presentation. It's about uh, WS. And in this, uh, I just want to explain it by a case study. Uh, I have here a drawing, a map, floor plan of uh, an office. And um, in this story, I, I, my requirement is to make a wireless network in an office. But I cannot use any wires. So what I want to point out here is uh, I can also use uh, the WS solution. Also, same as, as I pointed out previously with the outer deployments with our base station access points, but also for uh, indoor solutions, this would be a solution. But in the next presentation, we will go through all the different setups for uh, WDS. But for today, I just want to show out, show out in this uh, few slides here that uh, the question here is the requirement is to make a wireless network without any wiring to the access points, but of course, the access points need some power. We, we still need uh, to power up the access point. But if I would use an EAP or ECB series in WS mode, I can, in WS AP mode, I can make, I can link up all the access points to each other and, uh, and they will become one virtual access points. And especially if I use dual radio access point like the ECB 600, AP 600, I can use the WS AP mode to bridge the access point together and they will become one virtual access point. So schematically, you see here how the network is plotted over the floor plan and only one wire is going to link up to the network and the other five, uh, the other four access points are linked to each other with the number five of the access point that's linked to the network. So in this case, if I use, for instance, five gigahertz to do the WS link, I have a 2.4 gigahertz radio to supply wireless to the clients. Benefits in this WS setup, wirelessly linked to wireless network, and in this 
uh, WSAP, you have one virtual access point and even have network redundancy if I backlink the, the access point to multiple access points. But anyways, this is just as a startup for the next presentation. Um, I see my time is ending. Um, so from here, I would thank you for your presence in my webinar for today. I would invite you as well to my last webinar, which is dedicated to the various WDS deployments that we have in our system, in our lineup and how to uh, deploy them. Um, there is a, um, I have to point to the other side, um, the handout uh, is the pre presentation, uh, the PPT of this, uh, PSD of this, no, sorry, PDF of this presentation. So you can download it and otherwise you can still, uh, I, I will send you an email afterwards that you can still download this presentation. If you have any questions, please post them to webinar at ingeniousnetworks.eu and uh, I will uh, keep this uh, webinar open for a few more minutes that you can still download this presentation now. Otherwise, you have to wait for tomorrow for the link to download it. So I thank you very much for your presence and I hope to see you in the next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye.